Sup everyone, it is I, SPI, and I just wanted to do a video real quick talking about my thoughts on the brand new Ninjago series, Dragons Rising. I have seen all 10 of the episodes for part one, and this will be my non-spoiler review. So first of all, I really like this show's premise and how it started. I think for new viewers, this is a really good way to get into Ninjago. I just love how it's focused on characters that aren't the ninja. I've been wanting that for a while. I think one of my favorite episodes of season 11 was the episode that was focused on um, Little Nelson and Antonia, and we got to see what people think of the ninja and kind of that outside perspective. It reminded me a lot of the film Kung Fu Panda, how that film starts out with Poe, who is a super fan, basically, of the Heroes of the Land, the Furious Five, and then he eventually trains under them. I think that's so similar to Aaron, how Aaron is kind of like Poe. He is the fan of the legendary heroes um, of the world, and Lloyd is kind of like the Dragon Warrior. Poe becomes the Dragon Warrior in Kung Fu Panda, um, but it would basically be like... Uh, he would have been a fan as well of the legendary Dragon Warrior if it was someone else, I guess, if that makes any sense. And that's kind of how Eren is. And it just shows us, like, how much of a legend these ninja are. Like, I don't think um, the show illustrated that very well in the Wild Brain episodes. Uh, especially, I guess, with Crystal Eyes, how they were kind of seen as the villains who were ruining Ninjago City and were put in prison. And this also shows me that Lego could have done this a long time ago. I'm not so sure how it would have worked having more Dragon Hunters after this, but I think after March of the Oni, if Lego just went right into something like this, that would have been awesome. I love the Wild Brain seasons, but some of them, especially the earlier ones, um, with a good exception being Seabound, because that's a very standout season in my opinion, uh, some of these wild brain, some of the wild brain seasons are a little too repetitive, just kind of generic ninja adventures. They go off to another realm or another place and fight another uh, villain who will just be defeated at the end of the season. But it seems like the this premise completely changes the world of Ninjago, which I love. Uh, it's just cool to see new characters, new villains. Um, and yeah, as I mentioned before, just a good starting point for new fans. Like you don't have to watch the original show. It'll still have characters that, um, longtime Ninjago fans like myself love like Lloyd and Kai and characters like that. Um, but I love how it takes the time to focus on new characters. One gripe that I have, I think right now is just that Aaron started to get developed in the first few episodes but then as the season went along it focused a lot more on Sora which is awesome like I, I love how there's so much character development for Sora I honestly didn't expect that but there's still not much that Eren does um, in the second half of part one and I think that's because he's gonna have a lot more to do in part two and if that's true this is all probably fine uh, but it's just it's just kind of weird to me how in the first episode, they really started to develop um, Aaron, and then they didn't really do a whole lot with him in some of the later episodes. Um, but yeah, I, I like how Sora had a lot of character development. I I love how they're, they're really setting those two up as main characters. Um, but kind of along the lines of what I just said, when some of the other ninja come back, and I won't say who specifically you might know from the trailers... Um, it, when some of them come back, they kind of get pushed to the sideline a little bit. And I think if they could balance it a little bit better, like I liked how in, I think it was episode three, like Lloyd was training Aaron and Sora. If we got a bit more of that, I think that would have been awesome. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I've worked on a stop motion series for about five or so years now called Students of Spinjitsu. And that's basically like a next generation kind of story for Ninjago. It's needed that for a while. And I just love that right now, like they have that. I want to talk about the villains for a second, specifically Lord Roz. 
Honestly, I'm a little disappointed with the villains. I think they're incredible villains. They're very formidable foes. And you can really tell that um, as the series goes on that, hey, these guys are a threat. Like, I love how in past Ninjago seasons, the government or the force kind of controlling the realm, like, that has been um, primarily good for the most part. Uh, But now we have Imperium, and I like how the heroes are kind of, I guess, rebelling against Imperium. Imperium is kind of just merged with Ninjago. I think they really should have developed their main villains more, and specifically Lord Ross. Rapton, you know, he's a side character. He doesn't need a ton of development. Uh, I would have liked a backstory for him, but I kind of appreciate him as a side character, uh, but Lord Roz specifically, I'm very surprised that they didn't explain his backstory. I think they're probably saving it for part two. I would be very surprised if they didn't explain it at all, if it was like a Mr. E situation. Um, but yeah, I I think that was a, a, a mistake. I think they should have set, uh, set up Lord Roz um, a bit better. I think they definitely should have set up the Empress um, a little bit more. So another problem that I had, and I'm going to try to avoid spoilers the best I can here. I think what they did very well is introducing the old lore to new fans in a new and interesting way. And they used the merge to do that. Merging all the realms leads us to having some fun references to stuff like the Realm of Madness and the Cloud Kingdom and uh, other realms that are mentioned. I don't want to spoil too much. It's cool to see like the old lore tied in in a new way so that new, ca- new fans can watch it, but also old fans can go, hey, I know that guy. That's from um, the Southern Ninjago season, and I-, I think that's awesome. But if you're a new fan, you don't have to watch the old stuff because it's kind of also new because it's taking elements from previous seasons, but it's sort of reintroducing them. So I want to talk about the Cloud Kingdom for a second, and I'm going to try to be as non-spoilery as I can. Um, and for those of you who have watched the Students of Spinjitzu series, the Cloud Kingdom is a central part of that series because the main antagonist of the show is someone called Destiny Alterer, um, and he is someone who basically took over the Cloud Kingdom. He wrote into the scrolls of the Cloud Kingdom that he would have control over Destiny, banished all the other writers. His real name is Nobu. He is a Ninjago character from Possession. So he helped the ninja in Possession. He was the one that changed Fenwick's destiny so that Nimbus, the monster that uh, Fenwick, the old Master Rider, he trapped the ninja in a place. He sent Nimbus after them. And so Nobu was like, time to change up Fenwick's destiny a bit and sent uh, Nimbus after Fenwick. If you if you want to avoid like any knowing anything like skip over this part I'll have a time card to where you should skip to, but basically what happens is they sort of retcon and nerf the Cloud Kingdom, and it's established very early on in the episode that Lloyd, I think it is, and maybe someone else or maybe one of the other ninjas say like, "Hey, you guys say you write Destiny, but you really have no control over any of these events." But if you go back and rewatch Possession, it's very clear that, yes, they actually do have control over a lot of the events. And we don't know the extent of that. Um, I sort of get into this a bit in Students of Spinjitzu. Destiny Alter uh, doesn't have control over everything, everything. Um, Just generally um, altering the timeline, Destiny, that sort of thing. He's also one person, so there's a limit to what one person can do um, and write. Um, over a period of time so you can't like know everything all at once Um, but if you have like a whole bunch of writers like they just have a lot of power they made the made it so that Lloyd would be the green ninja there's a scene where one of the ninja in possession like knocks over some ink onto one of the scrolls and it makes Dareth hit like a um, like a tanker truck or something like that and spills oil on him um, and so it's, it's very clear that, yes, what they'd write there in the Cloud Kingdom um, has consequences to what happens in Ninjago. And so when they say, like, hey, you guys really don't have much control over events or whatever, it doesn't work. It's, it's a retcon. It, it's not consistent with the previous season. And you could explain it away, say, like, you know, Master Wu went through the time portal in Season 7 <laughs> and time 
stuff happened, but that that doesn't make any sense. Um, it's I I would I would say it's a mistake that they went this route. I think what they could have done is just like made the Cloud Kingdom a little bit more mystical, like not had the ninja just show up. There was a trailer in March of the Oni where the Oni were taking over the Cloud Kingdom. They took that out of the March of the Oni season. That was good, I think. Um, they shouldn't show that. Like, the Oni shouldn't be able to take over the Cloud Kingdom. And same thing with here, how there's a monster attacking the Cloud Kingdom, and they don't expect it. Um, it already doesn't make a little bit of sense that Moro snuck into the Cloud Kingdom, but they're just <laughs> digging themselves into a deeper hole by making the merge... Um, something that the Cloud Kingdom doesn't foresee and making all these monsters attack the Cloud Kingdom. Um, and yeah, I could go on and on about the Cloud Kingdom because I've thought so much about it for Students of Spinjitzu and Destiny Altar, but that's pretty much, yeah, pretty much my, my rant there. So if you want to see my take on it, go watch my Students of Spinjitzu series, primarily, um, episodes like The Great Alteration, the season two finale. So anyway, guys, if you like this video, please like it. And remember, Jesus loves you. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. He came that we may have life and have it abundantly. Um, he is the only way for us to have life to the full, uh, be truly satisfied, and God wants us to have a relationship with him. So if you have any questions about that, if you want to know more about that, please check out my SPI Ministries channel where I talk all about Jesus, God, the Bible, um, and hopefully I'll see you guys on another one of these videos talking about Ninjago Dragons Rising. And let me know down in the comments, what did you think of Dragons Rising Part 1? Are you excited for Part 2? I certainly am. That ending, ugh, I just, ah, uh, it's, I hate how we have to wait. I, ah, uh, and... Maybe I could talk about dreams as well, because I, I can tell, like, there might even be a part two for dreams, and I'm sad that I have to wait so long for Ninjago, and I, I hope they're going to do part two for dreams soon, um, or season two or whatever, so we'll, we'll see. Uh, I'm excited, but yeah, hopefully I'll see y'all next time.